Welcome to the Deerfield Sewer Study Committee meeting, Thursday, September 22nd, at the town offices on Conway Street in South Deerfield. Um, we're going to review and approve the minutes of our last meeting. We're going to continue discussion on the sewer rate options and see if there's any other business before the board this evening. And then we're going to set an agenda for our next meeting and uh, of the committee. So with that said, is there anybody have a chance to look at the minutes or? I wrote them, so I mean, Do we have any copies? I figured you guys would read them and online. no, I didn't bring them. I read them online. I got to shift my glasses too many times to do that. <laughs> So we can postpone until the next meeting? Yeah. All right, well, we'll do that. We'll postpone it until the next meeting. Um, well, anybody want to pick up where we left off on the sewer, um, sewer rates? I think we kind of uh, said that what we should do is charge basically for what people use for water and set the rate for that. And then perhaps go to a higher rate once somebody uses a lot more than normal. And also there's special provisions in the sewer regulations that allow you to charge for BOD. Like for example, when Oxford Pickle was there, they used to have problems with uh, BOD and one other problem. And we always would have to charge them extra for those things. Well, that comes off the top to make everybody else's rate a little cheaper. Well, John, I don't agree that we we decided or that we agreed that charging based on water use was was the way to go. It is the way to go. That's what I said. But what I said that, is, oh, so you're stating your you're stating your opinion, not not that that's what we agreed we agree on. That we're going to charge based on water usage. Oh, I don't think so. No, no. For, for, for this particular this, year. For this year. This year. For this year. Yeah. But going forward. But going forward. Oh, going forward. Yeah. Going, going forward, I thought there were, there was uh, some, uh, um, that at least some of the, the members of the committee liked the idea of a flat rate. And it, actually, and, and having thought about it, I feel there's a lot of good reasons there should be a flat rate that's not tied to water use. Number one, the infrastructure has to be there regardless of, for every building in town, regardless of how much uh, water flows through it. So if you've got a bank on property that's sitting empty, still there has to be the capacity for when they sell it to handle the sewage coming out of it. And that's for, that, that, that goes for every building in town. Um, the, also the flat rate eliminates the snowballing effect of we raise rates and then people start to conserve, and then we have to raise rates again, so they conserve more, and it's a never-ending cycle, and apparently that, that has happened in Greenfield. So if you have a flat rate, you, you separate the, uh, the rate from uh, the water usage, so you, so you don't have that uncertainty. Um, third, a flat rate makes a monthly billing real easy because you set X number of dollars a year, $700 a year or whatever, divided by 12, and that's the um, sewer user's monthly bill. Makes it real easy. Um, I'm really in favor of sending a monthly bill like any other kind of utility bill, any other kind of utility bill. It makes it easy for people to pay. They get in the habit of it. It's just another bill. Um, the town already has in place to a system to there. pay bills online. Okay. And you could have, a, have it set up as a, just a recurring payment off of a credit card that. or a bank account. I think he's got a very valid reason um, with his proposal. I was thinking more so that we try to gear about half the cost to service the residential customers with a flat rate of, uh, and then the balance be charged by the uh, usage. And just do that twice a year when the water bill comes, just come up with a usage rate. You mean have a flat rate, you have a, have a flat rate and a usage? Yeah, in other words, do a, a bigger 
flat rate, a bigger minimum charge, and then dual usage. But I could buy into your program too, John. No, John. no, I'm not. Um, I, I don't. I don't know how. I, I, I'm very confused about how you do a commercial rate or an institutional rate. But I, I think the residential rate, the you know, the way I'm proposing is is the easiest way for everybody, for the town and for the sewer users. So are you proposing flat rate for residential and usage rate for industrial? And no, I, I'm not proposing anything for industrial and institutional because I, I, I'm totally confused and uh, undecided on, but at least for residential, and I'm sorry, I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't make that clear, but, uh, I, you know, I, I just feel that that's the, the flat rate is the easiest way and it, um, it just makes it easier for everybody, the town and the, and the sewer users. Um, what about, just to play devil's advocate, what about the senior citizen that barely well, I think, doesn't use, uh, the person that doesn't use much water? Or, well, so. but again, their house, the senior citizen, that house that they're living in with alone with five bedrooms, you know, they could pass away tomorrow and the house gets sold. And you have to have an infrastructure in place to handle the sewage coming out of, you know, coming from five people. So uh, I think we should have maybe some kind of like financial assistance for people that are, for elderly people or people who, you know, are in financial straits and just can't pay. But, uh, you know, <clears throat> you know, if we if the if the rate increased sixty percent, which really I think it has to, the flat rate. So if it, if it increased sixty percent, it would go up to seven hundred something dollars a year, which is like sixty dollars a month. And to me, that's I don't know. My electric bill is way more than that. I, I don't know how about about you guys. My phone bill is way. My cell phone bill is way more than that. My Comcast bill is just out of control. I moved to Northampton this summer, and oh my God, I I have a swimming pool mm -hmm. that needed to be topped off a lot because of the drought. And when I lived in Greenfield, our bill was $180 every six months, and now I just got a bill for two months for $240. Yep. And 67 of that was a separate fee for sanitary stormwater. Mm -hmm. But they're upgrading yep. their whole system over there. Right. So I had water sewer and the stormwater collection mm -hmm. fee on top of it. So that's for two months I'm paying more than I used to for six. I mean, we're just really, we're just really living in the past as far as this goes. You know, $400 a year, we're just, we're just on average, we're just living in the past. It's. Uh, I'd like to comment on a couple things. I, mean, I realize the town has a credit card on online payment, but if you ever investigate, the fees that they charge are atrocious. This is yeah, well, okay. well, so, that would be something we could we could you know versus versus uh, mailing every month. I, I don't know. Well, Those are things that we could. But that was just a comment. Right. The other thing is. Bruce, can I just comment on that comment on that issue? Oh, for you. Um, if you write, if you give me a check number. There's no fee. Six. Right. If you do an ACH transfer, if you do no a check, fee. right, but a check yeah. credit card. Yeah. 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 Um, the TV. other thing is, is did everybody read this past, uh, this uh, handout that Bruce had given out? I don't know when it when, but this sewer study report that was done in 2000, by any chance? Mm -hmm. I looked at it. And that, if that, evidently prior to that, this town did have. Uh, used a uh, equivalent residential unit. And uh, they asked Mr. Dick Nixon, the select board asked Mr. Nixon to do a, do a study about converting over to um, uh, flat rate rather than fixed fee, which they had the fixed fee at that time. Now, one of the things that's been a, quite a concern is raising the rates on people that don't use it. Well, the study showed that almost unanimously that residential customers saved quite a lot if they were to go to the flat rate system as against they evidently had used a flat fee at that point in time. The flat fee, the commercial users were getting basically a free ride, even with the EDUs. So at that point in time, Mr. Nixon had evidently made a uh, recommendation not to change, however, the select board did change at that time to save the average residential customer 
quite a lot, and he has a whole chart of uh, savings that he actually did for individual residences at that point in time. So, and you know, prior to reading this last week, Mr. Davies, I was totally in, in, mm -hmm. uh, in line with this uh, uh, flat, flat rate. Flat rate. Mm -hmm. And, but then I get, the more I got to think of it, it's like when this was done also, was when there was probably higher usage when the household, this was 16 years ago, the household average size was probably one or two points higher than it is today on top of it. We do have a lot more two-person two households at this point in time. So I think, and I understand what you're saying about the conservation, I do think that you would be raising the uh, residential units quite substantially and going back to giving commercial free ride, even if you tried to adjust the commercial to EDU. I know part of your presentation last, last, uh, last time we met was, uh, you know, based on the 50 big, biggest cities, they uh, are now using the equivalent resi residential unit. But if you go by Western Sampson's report, there's only like 8% of the Massachusetts that does. 55% uh, of them go on a fixed rate rather than a fixed fee. So mm -hmm. uh, that, and there again, uh, most of those have full-time sewer commissions and everything else. So I would have to, I personally would have to say, well, you know, that's part of the lead. Evidently, that appears to be the better systems from the majority of, commit, of uh, uh, cities and towns in the Commonwealth that have already had to go through that. So at this point in time, I, I would have to go back to supporting a uh, uh, fixed rate, but along with Bob, a much higher minimum uh, fee to compensate. So you're taking the best of both worlds because you don't want too much conservation to take a hold mm -hmm. because that's going to affect right. not that's just the sewer, it's going to affect the water department substantially mm -hmm. too because they run on the same thing. Is uh, you know they have to have a certain they have to be able to uh, have a certain amount of water flow to be able uh -huh. to budget their bills. So I think we need to raise the minimum fee substantially and maybe work on that on an annual basis and complement that with a moderate raise in the uh, rate annually would be my personal opinion. Bruce, do you know how many? Um Rate users there are residentially? Uh, it's in the study. Uh, I thought I said 888 or something. It's 888 like bills ago. Right. But that doesn't, that's many? commercial and, and residential. Right. I think it's 580 something. I think, yeah, I think you're right. Oh, something. But that's both, right? That That's residential. Oh, that's residential. Um, I thought it was higher. I had the numbers in there. Off the top of my head, I thought there was around 700 um, on the residential. Customers, we had 650, you're right, 654 residential, 82 commercial, 28 industrial, tech exempt, other, 118. That's the institution. So that, the first number you said was 654. 654. What's that number of pipes coming out of something into the system? Oh, bill. People, uh, bill. people receive bills? Yes. Right. Residential. It says um, sewer customers by assessment type per, oh, billing, yeah. per billing period. Right. That's, this is one of them. Yep. That was last winter, 2015. Shouldn't we, maybe we should take a spreadsheet and say, okay, if we do it this way, here's what we're going to get. If we do it another way, here's what we're going to get. We can just change all the scenarios and see what it will look like instead of... Well, it's not just the monetary aspect on the, on the far end. That could be, a, you know, we could just say, okay, flat rate, everybody gets the same. But if you don't want to do fair and equitable, now you get into uh, going back, as I said before, you have a lot of... Uh, uh, it, people in this town, they're down to two-person households. And if I may, I'd just like to use my own account, it would be an example. And I don't consider myself a water conservationist. Um, you know, we shower every day. Uh, my wife does clothes many times more than I think is necessary. Uh, I will put that in the house. 
Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's on TV already. Uh -huh. But uh, it, well, compared to the size of a washing machine, let's put it that way. Okay. <laughs> Sounds better. <laughs> and um, you know, through the through the winter months, uh, we use uh, less than 100 gallons per day. Okay. So now they're saying in the report that the average user uses 174. So it's, I don't consider us real conservationists, but yet we're falling way under that standard. And part of it, I, I'm sure, is, both, is the fact that there's only two of us in our house. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with the size of the house. I mean, I know there was well, a comment uh, last week about using the Title V, and I understand where you're coming from, but we're, what you're probably going to say, in, in, you know, based you on know what, what you said, <laughs> you know, the house is big, but if you maintain the flow rate, then that means when that is sold over, to a next customer, then the amount that they're using is going to go up, in which case they're going to go up as well. well but the, by raising the minimum fee would help to level off that cost of maintaining the structure. I think one other thing that possibly needs to go along with this is possibly looking at a betterment fee so that any place that that sewer goes by, even if it's undeveloped, gets a charge because it has increased value for that property mm -hmm. and I could tell you you know there's a huge piece of property right now that would probably not be able to perk if it, uh, if that's for sale uh, but since it has town sewer I'm sure they can do something with it and there's several other properties in town too but part and parcel that is I think we have to go one step farther because we are not operating with an enterprise fund and right now, all these fees, including, which I just found out, uh, many of the years we've had upwards of a million dollars or, or thereabouts, uh, and supposedly all the revenues are kept in a separate account, all the interest for all that reserve money has all gone to supplement the town budget and has not been separated into uh, the sewer use. So all that money that's gone in reserves has, has been used to uh, supplement the town budget. If it has a separate account, how does that money get transferred from that account to it, the I'm not, I'm not sure, but What's there's that? something about the special the revenue fund. Cash, I believe. Pool. 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 Only because I don't know, and perhaps there's a little I'm just guessing, board. but I assume they pull the cash. But it, there's, there's, something, there's something in the laws that a special, a special revenue fund has to be cashed out into the general fund at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. but. An enterprise fund does not because that is its own entity, and I don't know the particulars of it. Mm -hmm. All I know is I talked to the accountant and I asked her what has happened to all that interest that has been on all this reserve for all these years. And she said it's gone into the general fund. And if it's gone into the general fund, and I basically says that, that meaning this, all this interest has been subsidizing the town budget, and it was, well, yes. 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 Well, how okay. difficult is it to establish a, an enterprise fund for the sewer? I mean, it seems like that might be... That's it's just going to be brought before town meeting, as far as I know. Yeah, I think that... Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. You know, I'm just like saying that I think that has to be incorporated with this whole thing right. of developing a system that will work to fund the... Uh, mm -hmm. but in answer to your point. statement relative to betterments, when the original sewers were put in town, there were betterment charges charged to every property owner up and down all the streets that had the sewers, okay? And, um, you know, the, I can't remember what the rate was, but they were all charged to betterment, and you can go into registry deeds, and you can actually look up and see what properties paid the betterment charges. And if the, if it, I understand if it went by a farmer, and what have you, they deferred taking the betterment charges until the time the property was sold, but they had to be paid with interest when the property was sold. So it wasn't exempted, it was deferred. Deferred. And Accumulated and deferred. And deferred, okay? So, you know, but when they developed Crestview, as you talk, right, the developer paid all the infrastructure costs to put it all in, all right? Prior to that, when Captain Lathrop was built, King Philip was built, and I'm not sure about Kamaki Avenue, there were, the town took on putting the sewer and the water in, and there were betterment charges charged to the developer. And then they decided, the town decided they weren't gonna do that anymore, and that's why the developer has to pay all that cost. 
but the developer could also, by pay, also paying the cost, he could also, he's going to be paying impact fees and hookup fees when he develops, right? Because we now have hookup fees and we help now have the uh, other charge, don't we? And I, wasn't I told that recently? <coughs> Beside the- There's another charge the in the bill. Impact, you get, there's impact fees and there's connection fees. Um, and they weren't applying them for a while, but they just put them back in uh, a while back. I don't know. No, we'll, we'll, maybe we got to look into it. But but uh, but here's one of the big things about our sewers. If you look at Nixon's report, that the usage of canes was 81 million gallons, and and Greenfield Industries, which I think they're talking about the old Millers Falls building, was 14 million gallons, and Huntsman was using 7 million. So you've lost the revenues from, you know, substantial amount of your commercial revenues have gone by because these businesses have left. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the residences are picking up a lot of that cost. I mean, and I assume that there's been some uh, conservation efforts taking place on the other major develop major use, which was Hardy's. It's got a different name now, but... Yeah, but they, they, were using, they were using 50 million gallons, according to Nixon's report. Well, one of the things I believe back then is that a lot of their molds were water cooled. Yeah. So kind of wasted. They, and they, I think a lot of it's changed to refrigeration now. I, I, think, I think you're right. You're yeah, so it, it's probably 15 or 20 percent of that yeah. at this point. But you've lost all those revenues from from that source of the, the industrial users. And one time, a lot of the major machinery was cooled by water, yep. and when it was cooled, it went directly down into the drain. So they didn't use it for nothing other than cooling their machinery. Yeah, again, that, that's why I say things like that the raise minimum fee. And you know, going back to the connection charge, uh, it might be worthwhile considering Rather, and I'm not sure, maybe, keep, I don't know who knows uh, uh, how the commercial ones are billed at this point in town. Is that like $40 and $25 also? 25 25 and that's it? Connection fee on the bill, I believe. On, on commercial? $25. In the 40 not the, 25 I, I think it's on the it's not, <coughs> It could be based on the, on the, the meter size. Well, it given it if, it, if it is, it you know, I would suggest that maybe uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's the reason a commercial should pay their fair rate. Calculating no, no more than that, just their fair rate. Yeah, that's practically I think way. I agree with Bruce. I think what we got to do is take where you're charging twenty five dollars now, you go up to seventy five or hundred bucks this year, then the following year you probably keep it at hundred or hundred and a quarter, because that should pay for part of the infrastructure, and then from there go to usage based upon what you use. So if somebody has five kids in a family and they're using a lot of water and they don't care about it, let them pay the bill. You know, Tony DeSimone uh, mentioned to Kevin and I in a, another meeting when we were discussing plant upgrades uh, over at the plant that it's very common in Connecticut, they charge $1,500 to $2,000 to collect a business, connect a business to the sewer. And he said it's usually a function of a percentage of like expected revenue or total flow expected or there's some benchmark that they use. Well, but I have a question. Can I, don't, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I should know this. But when we're talking about a connection fee, this is a one-time fee to hook up? Right. No. No. There's, no. there's two. Or is it, one is a connection fee like you're talking about. Yeah. A one-time. So say you get uh, 30 new apartments in town. You can charge a connection fee, but instead of $25, you could turn around and say, I want $300 or $500 per unit. Mm -hmm. That's one. And then the second one is the minimum charge that you have to fill every six months as we fill now. Instead of the minimum being $25, that should probably go up to 75 or 100 bucks and then still continue the system that we have now because it's a fair based upon what people use. <laughs> well, I, was not, I was actually going to go one step farther and there again, this is only on the assumption that uh, commercial and industrial are still at the 25 and 40 was to, uh, I assume you have mapping of uh, the pipe sizes coming in off of these varies and, you know, maybe set uh, the four inch, standard four inches a unit of one, uh, six inches uh, the, is twice a square inch uh, 
would be a factor of 2.25. Um, you know, eight inch would be a factor of four. Uh, so if you're raising it to, we'll use $100 for residential, uh, you know, a six inch pipe would be uh, $225 if they have a six inch connection. Are we, we're t you're talking about a minimum charge now? or Yes, yes. You know, so if you have, and that would pay for the requirement for the larger infrastructure for that particular uh, building. And, uh, you know, that might be something to enhance. But there again, I'm not sure how the commercial and industrial, and I don't think it's putting an undue burden on it because it's part and part of the infrastructure required for them to operate. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about their operating expenses, we're talking about the operating expenses of the South Deerfield water treatment plant mm -hmm. at this point. Or the old Deerfield water treatment plant, whichever. And the collection system. No. Can't forget about the collection system. The pardon? We cannot forget about the collection system. Yeah, well, well, there again, that's, that's yeah. part of the infrastructure yeah, exactly. that's, uh, yeah. that this would be going to. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Well, um, I, there's been a lot of discussion thus far tonight that I've heard since I arrived right around 6 about rate structures and how, to, how much to charge and minimum fees and all this. But is there an end goal in mind? I mean, do you have an idea? Have, has anybody brought up a figure? that you're going to need to do certain things or have you identified what things you want to do and then how much that's going to cost so that you have a basis for arriving at a rate structure that would support that? Well, I think we discussed that last time and the consensus was uh, before we can bring, I'm sorry, what's the, the company back in, we need to target what type of rate structure we're going to go after because we can't have them developing 14 structures. We want to narrow their their job down to, okay, this is the type of structure we want to go. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we got to do with this structure to meet these goals? And I think that's what we kind of decided we want to head to. But I thought two meetings ago, we made a motion that was passed that we would just deal with this year's rate rate and defer discussion of that was other opinion. billing methods once we've established our capital needs. Close. Well, then, yeah. yeah. Right? We, 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 <laughs> well, we, <laughs> we said, yeah, but it sounds to me like we're getting back into well, what are we going to do well, year after year. We were presented with the rate structure, with the rate study, John, and that's, and we've kind of been on this, we've kind of been on that trajectory ever well, since well, then. What we're going to do but, for this calendar year is what we've always done. Yeah, the methodology right. that we've used in the well, past. That's what we're going to do for right. this current right. year. Going forward is what we're trying the, to come up with. And the with. select board is going to set the rate at some point, whatever whatever they feel is correct. Then why don't we go back to what we decided and let's now let's work on our capital needs and then well, we'll have some idea then we'll have some idea I think of what we're gonna one, need for money. One issue is that our rates are so low that we don't qualify for any for grants. But let's do it this year. And well we already Okay, but I, I'm just saying that, that that's to me, that's one of the reasons that we're talking about this is that is that our rates are so low now that we don't qualify for grants because um, our rates are too low. So that's one reason to discuss, and we and we know that the capital costs are going to be extraordinary, and we know we have to raise the rates substantially. So what but we don't know how mean? much. We don't know what well, we need. Well, the we rates, the rate study need. says it needs to go to forty dollars. Forty dollars per thousand. Right? I, I just want to jump in here because sure. I, I think, I think what we need to do is look at this as a two-pronged approach. I think Keith is absolutely right as far as we really do need to identify what we are going to do with that plant, and at the same time look at the rate study in hand in hand. I, it's it's very difficult. In fact, I just. I wrote up a little thing of, I still feel that until we know the true cost, and that's determining what we need to do right. as far as it makes thinking outside the box and creating proposals and recommendations ineffectual. I mean, you know, I think we've got to identify the target here. We're, we're trying Absolutely. to get a moving target while we're trying to set rates too, and, I, and we're trying to do them as individual items and I don't think we can do that I think we need to I think we need to deal with both 
to be able to get to the end goal of what we what I think we, all we need to do with costs first right. and then establish a rate structure will get us the money back well I think what we were trying to come up with is how we were going to get the money and you know whether we use the methodology that we're now currently using or if we go with a flat fee or whatever you know the dollar amount will change in perspective with our goal of if we need 50 million dollars the flat fee might instead of being a hundred dollars might be two hundred dollars but we need to decide you know what methodology are we going to use going forward are we going to stay with you know just the usage of the gallonage and a, a small but, fee but, but but or, but that's why i say that? i think we need to do both because mm -hmm. that that told dollar cost could change. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah. been talk about the vector truck, and a lot of people are feeling that that's not needed. That's a four hundred thousand dollar expense. Right. If we're talking, if we're talking of a budget of a rough figure of thirty-two million dollars, eliminate that four hundred thousand. Are we going to just simply upgrade the two plants, Old Deerfield, South Deerfield? That's going to cost X amount of dollars. We already have some pretty good uh, figures that we're dealing with. If, if that's not the case, are we going to have to run a uh, sewer line? Do we need to extend sewer lines? That's going to be additional costs. If we don't need to extend sewer lines, we can eliminate that off the budget. So once you, once you start shrinking as far as your dollar amount, that, that you know, your specific cost, I think that's going to influence how we're going to try to set a, yes, a, absolutely. a fair and equitable rate. Plus, not only the for the near future, we have the cart before the horse. That's right. And by working on the rate structure up front, that is then going to determine how long it's going to take to acquire the money necessary to do whatever is decided later. And if you come up with a rate structure first and a flat fee amount and all this other stuff, then you, after that, okay, now that's established. Now you come up with what you're going to do or not do with infrastructure. And then you come up with a cost figure for that. Now you've got this and you've got this. How long is this going to take to save up enough to pay for this? That's, you're assuming that we're going to attach a dollar amount to all of that. Right. And that's what I'm not saying right. to do right, right, right now. Right. Right. We're not right. going to do that. What we're just thinking is if, if we're charging a flat $50 now and $0.10 cents a gallon, and that's the methodology that we want to continue on, then that's fine. That part is closed. <clears throat> then we can work on you know, what infrastructure, and we put a dollar amount to those two things. But do we want to charge a flat fee of $200 a month? But it does, we don't have to say $200 a month. We just decide we're going to charge a flat fee. That's all we're trying to do. Oh, I see what method, all, how are we going okay. to, what method are we going to collect the money? We're, we're not going to put a dollar amount to any of it. Yet. But if you decide that you're going to charge a flat fee, say, for example. Well, let's say if it's a flat fee, but then we need But let's say million. you decide to do that. Yep. You all decide and you vote, yep. yeah, well, flat fee sounds great to me. Boom, unanimous, flat fee it is. All right, so now, now you're going to work on infrastructure costs and goals, and you come up with that. What if that turns out that that means the flat fee to everyone divided by the number of users is going to be exorbitant? Then it's what? going to be exorbitant no matter if you what study, you do. If you I mean, that no, no, no I, but, but then it would be but, but, maybe too much up front and everyone's going to freak out. But it's not going to be any up front. It, would, it could be broke. If it was a flat fee, it could be done monthly. And even if it came out to be, you know, uh, $2,000, and you say, well, that's too much, if you go back and you calculate by the gallons, and you still need X amount of dollars, it's going to be the same still money. It's just how are you going to get it? That's true. What I'm That's true. We're, 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 all, we're only trying to create, we're using numbers right now as examples, <laughs> but Excuse using me. the Sorry. minimum, you, my preference at this point being the minimum, you know damn well you're not going to raise the minimum to cover, and we'll use your budget right now close to $600,000, okay? You know that. Even the minimum, we're not going to raise to cover that six hundred thousand dollars. So you know the rate, the the flow. It's going to depend on flow. Is going to pay for the rest. Well, if that budget goes to two million, well, there now again we have to float both of them up. But we're only talking the type of structure at this point in time. The other part of this is is we have to be able to get finalize a structure to be able to get to. Uh, the consultant so that he can work out a structure that will give X number of dollars. After we decide on a structure, yes, we do need to decide as to what 
we are going to do in the near future in the long in the long term so that we can throw back in the consultants uh, ball and say okay now what are we going to do if we you know we're, we've decided we want to use a fixed fee or a fixed rate okay what's going to happen with these numbers to to put in a new generator this year uh, start the, the head works and so forth so we're only throwing out numbers as examples right now we're not setting a rate we're just trying to create a structure for setting that rate but how can, Agree you, know, on how can you know if a structure is going to be workable and worthwhile and equitable if that's you don't know what the end amount is going to be, I agree that, with that's, that's the advantage I agree of a flat case. rate. Yeah, can, I mean, that's like, easily, I just agree usually with you. Usually you decide what you're going to do and then how you're going to pay for it. What are, what, what, why do we have to establish the rate methodology now? Why do we have to do it before what we need for capital costs? Then let's do capital costs. And um, I don't think we have to, but... I think we need to come up with some idea, because we have a consultant that's sitting there. He's not going to wait eight months before we give him some information. So He's not? He, it was decided by the committee prior to us that the first thing that needed to be established was a sewer rate, completed was a sewer rate study. The study has been done, and the preliminary findings are out. And in 10 years, the rate is going to be $40 for a 1,000 gallon of flow. And that equals about $2,600 per residential customer. For a minimum residential customer. It's not like my bill. So I, my feeling is that we should look at all the options and then bring what we feel is the best option. Not decide, yes, this is the this is only one decision. Give the consultant what we think are our best options that we, we would like to look at. Then have run numbers based on the capital number that was given to them, which was based on the December 8, 2015 presentation, which Jack was there, Jeff was there. Is that the one for thirty one is that the one for thirty one million? Yes. And that information I requested from um, the town so we could have a copy of that capital plan. Can so, I just make a comment on that? I'm yep. Um, I thought Kip made a, made a good comment a few meetings ago when he said, you know, we don't necessarily have to do all 32 million at once. I we don't necessarily have to go out and borrow $32 million. We can do, we can do the head works. We can... Um, Generator. We can add. We can do a generator. We can do a vent hood. We can we can add a um, pool. Another. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, oh, the clarifier. The clarifier pool. Yeah. Um, we can put some some uh, steps up to that sludge tank in Old Fairfield <laughs> before we get sued. Um, you know, we don't have to. We don't have to do 32 million, and so. So that, that budget number is going to be a moving target because as we're doing things and putting some things off, those thing, the, the disadvantages that those, those things we're putting off are going to increase in cost. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I understand what you're saying, John. I agree, but, but I I agree with you, Jack, but I still think that we need to identify what we're going to do and what we're not going to do. You know, we're talking about a clarifier tank and adding that. Are, are we doing that for the South Deerfield plant? Are we doing that for the Old Deerfield plant? I mean, it, I don't you know, know if we, we have the expertise to decide that. Mm -hmm. I think we need an engineer to tell us which they're but going to But that's being proposed. Well, I mean, I'm I, just saying, well, that I, I think, maybe that's the best recommendation. Okay. We don't know. I think Keith made it. He, he's the... He's the operator. He, he made a good case for another clarifier tank at the South Deerfield plant. Mm -hmm. He made a very good case for that. Mm -hmm. um, he, he, there's a very good case for a new generator that's outside and doesn't fill the building with exhaust. Right. That's already going to happen on the yeah. Headworks program. The generator is part of the Headworks? It's in the building, right? Yes. Okay. I should just pull that outside okay, so. as it is. 
there again, yeah, that well, goes back to Jeff's uh, two-pronged approach. Right. But you, know, uh, you can't intermingle both of them. You can't have the same conversation at the table at once. You kind of kind of go down one road yeah. and maybe back off and, and, and drop that discussion and go down the other road. But you can't try to bring them both in the same conversation in the same You're, you're trying hour. to bring the two. The, the at the end, then you the bring them back together. together. At some but right point now, day. right now, we've got to right. work on one or the other and so. then bring them, then fold them back together somewhere down the road. Because we're there again, we're not setting a dollar value. We're mm -hmm. setting right. a, sure. hopefully a structure that will be the most fair and most equitable yeah. to all parties right. involved. But I do think that the, the rates at least need to be increased gradually soon. Because mm -hmm. to, to go from $400 a year to $2,600 a year, there'll be a revolt. There, it, it, I, I agree, yeah, I agree. It, but unfortunately, it, it, it's going to have to go it, a lot faster than well, slow. Yeah. But if you don't start soon, down, they're going to have to sit down in October, November, and set the rates for this year. We Based upon the budget for this year, mm -hmm. that thing's going to go from $400 to $600 alone, just by that. Just the budget? Yeah, the budget increases 43% for this year. Yeah. So if you're going up to $600, we are almost at that point where we should be already. And if they increase it a little bit more for the reserve, all of a sudden, it may be $700 here. Yeah. And guess what? When I was sitting there as a selectman, and we turned around, went up $25 on a budget, we had 30 or 40 people on here climbing down our throat. Okay, so, so these guys are going to have to earn their money this, this year. This is a good point. But, but this is where... This you, is got where your, you got your arm invested. That's right. <laughs> this is where the public need, needs to be educated on why this is going to happen. You can't just drop it on them. But we can't have seven, di nine different opinions when we face the public. We've right. got to narrow. We've got to consent, right. get a consensus with our own. Although we we do have a we we all understand the basic problems. The, right. The, right. But you know the basic we, need for the infrastructure. The, its age. The, the, right. the but estimated we need cost. need to come together and, and have yeah. two or three different options. As you know how we're going to collect the money, and so then the dollar amount that we're going to collect is another subject right. too. You know, right. but not for this year. You know, we don't need it. I know, but but but, but this is the year that we're going to go up a six to right. six right. or seven hundred dollars. Anyway. Yeah, we know what that is. We're talking. I understand that, and that's going to be part of the rationale, and that's going to be part of what we're going to educate the people when they get that bill. They're going to be educated, <laughs> and then they're going to come and visit no, the that, select that might be a job for the. Uh, I will be glad to. That yeah. might be a job for the uh, for for a class at UMass of public relations. What about Trevor, what were you going to say? Well, I was just going to say the rates got to go up anyways if we're ever going to have any hope to get any money for this, right? So. I mean, we're going to go up automatically. You can. So we've got to get. There's we've still, got to get some help. I don't believe I haven't heard from Doug on how that application for that grant has been coming in. I know it's in, but I don't know if they. I don't. I haven't heard either. Where that's at. Do you know if Doug ever asked as to whether the uh, rates can be? Increased over what the budget is because he was supposed to ask yeah. that we didn't get the answer two months that. ago. This did, year, did we ever get an No. Oh, I see. Because we've already got a budget. Well, a normal a normal budget, uh, you a million dollars. You divide what it is, and that's all you can collect is a million dollars. The question was basically, you know, since we're be facing some serious cost, is can we raise? $1.2 million without it having to go through the normal budget process. And it was, it, it wasn't sure because it is, because uh, of the reserve, special, special revenue reserve fund right. works. Because in all reality, that special re revenue fund is actually incorporated in the general fund. He was supposed to find that out a couple months ago yeah. because that would also, and there again, that's be part and parcel of this overall, as well as a requirement, almost a requirement, mm -hmm. that we really look into setting this up as an enterprise fund. Right. You have more flexibility. 
Well, yeah, 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 because in that way you can legally put away into a reserve fund and everything but else. You, doesn't the town, in a way, do that? We used to do it for the ambulance, to put money away for an ambulance, and we did it for the elementary school roof. Yes, we, yes. We did yeah, it for a lot fun. of different things. Yeah, but, but that was a town-wide assessment, too. Okay, mm -hmm. but that was part and parcel of ca capital planning. Mm. Hmm. Too many technicalities for me. <laughs> okay. Well, but, uh, question is, uh, we got another minute. Kippy's yeah. got to leave. He's got to leave. All right. So we want to throw you out of here because we want you to represent us as well. However, goodbye. <laughs> I, I'm feeling the love. <laughs> anyway, we're not going to solve the problem tonight. No, I don't think so either. And what we probably should do is set another date to come back and hammer this. But I'd like to get the information from the town administrator before he leaves as to what the impact and the connection fees are that are currently on the books in town. And if there's anything else. When well, I looked at Bob, I missed that. Excuse me? You want to get from the administrator what? The impact fees and the connection fees, et cetera. Because what they are now. It, yeah, because it came up. I brought it up back in August, right? And I don't remember what the answer was. And but some people don't remember that that came up. But I've got a note on my thing, that, and I know I asked the question. You I did. wrote a note down. Yeah. But we need to know that. And uh, the other thing, when I looked at uh, David Nixon's report here, he talks about Eagle Brook getting their water from Wells and the Deerfield we Academy. We discussed that last week. So, major problem. So are those? Yeah. Are we getting the right calculation? We, we talked about that. Okay. And the other thing, if you're going to do an enterprise fund. Can we do more than one enterprise fund? Can they be split between the two different plants? Mm -hmm. Because neither one is dependent on the other. The only thing that is dependent is the shared uh, services of the operators. I have a question. You guys probably answer this. And I've, I've run into this and other things. If we, whatever we set as a rate, shouldn't it be voted at town meeting rather than have the select board? Because I found that no, no, you can't do it. No, you've got a budget. No, you have to set the meters. You have to set the rate based upon what it'll take to generate that income. Okay, so if, you'll never if, get it past a town meeting, right? So if you have a situation where there's a fee in town, and the select board changes that fee, doesn't town meeting trump the select board decision? No, 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 because no, you're. You've got the executive authority to do what's got to be done between town meetings. And you have to set that rate, and it's your obligation to set the rate, so you just set the rate. And know that you're going to have a little bit of controversy in town. You are the sewer commissioner. Would That's that, right. would that, would that, and this is more of a broad um, assessment, is would that hold true with other things in town? If something is set at town meeting, do the select board have the authority to change that figure? Like what, for example? Well, it, building fees. Yes, you yes. can change building fees. Yes. You can. You can. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, I think we ought to set a date because Kippy needs to move on. Yeah. Oh, you guys can stay here. Are you? No, we want to go through. <laughs> <laughs> set the date and the agenda. Dog and pony show. Okay. <laughs> date and agenda. Are we going to continue this discussion? Yes. Yes. Continue the discussion. Um, and the next day, second week in October, you want to do it sooner than later? Second week in Third October. week is is always the... Second week's good. Yeah, third week is the scams. Meeting. Third week is always the scams on Thursday. Mm -hmm. The 13th? 13th. Thursday the 13th or 6 o'clock? 6 o'clock. Yeah. That's it. Before we, uh, someone makes a motion to adjourn, I will be sending out um, what we t discussed last week, Title V um, sewer flow design criteria with an EDU uh, number attached to it. So I'll send that email. Um, and it, it, it follows the discussion that industrial commercial really doesn't pay much more than residential. Where you see the biggest chunk of the money coming in is through the school system. Uh, what I did hand out, uh, what I did hand out, was just my thoughts on the two or three studies that I've read. Um, 
that I emailed to you, and there's, these are the, there's only like four or five ways to do a rate structure. Um, so that's just for information for reading. And the last thing that we asked, somebody asked for last week was um, a sewer replacement cost evaluation. So I did one. Um, and you can read it and we can discuss it next week. Was the Nixon thing handed out at the last meeting? Um, it was emailed to you. And okay. it was handed out. Um, Do you have a next one? Because uh, I wasn't at the last meeting. Um, if it was emailed, I go back online and get it. I, yeah. I emailed everything. Did you email um, this, the septic system replacement cost one year? I'm gonna re all that I'm going to email to you okay. after the meeting. Yeah, that's fine. Then. But I wanted, if you want me wanted a hard copy, those three items that I have, I'll email out. All right. Um, yeah. 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 So no. meeting. Are you going to Are you going to notify Bruce? Are you going to notify the town clerk of the meeting? I can do that. Okay. Would you? Because I got. A lot to deal with with CIPC. Congratulations, <laughs> we didn't want you to feel left out. <laughs> so uh, we have a motion to adjourn. Come Make a motion, we adjourn. Second. Second. Third. Whatever. Bruce, you guys say all in favor? All, all in, favor. in favor. Aye. Aye. Five, six.